Good evening. You know, the uh, Sheely family, we have a lot to be grateful for tonight uh, as you honor our day. And uh, we're just so, 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 so thankful that we can be here and that uh, y'all uh, give us this gift. I know that uh, uh, this, the, the, this day and time, as great as the game of football is, uh, there are challenges to it. But to, to have a night where we celebrate and then have a Hall of Fame, the South Carolina Football Hall of Fame, they can so much game of football and all the great things and the impact it's had in so many lives around this uh, globe. And uh, so just uh, we thank you uh, in advance for uh, Coach coming up. You know, Deb uh, started uh, his high school playing career, baseball player, went on to, to be the uh, uh, head coach, it's his first head coaching job, his first coaching job at Lawrence High School. You know, he's a product of South Carolina, he's a South Carolina man. I know he's proud. Uh, I think that uh, as we look back as a, as a family, we see a guy that uh, is, a, is a tough guy. All right, went on Marine, graduated from college, went in the Marine Corps. And I tell you what, you know, to be a, a, a child in our family, you've learned pretty quick the definition of the word now. You know, being a football coach in the Marine. But you know, we saw a loving father and a great man. We saw a man that went on and uh, really transformed a program like Baylor as an office coordinator and in the land of uh, RPOs and all the run pass options that we see this day and time. To see what he did offensively back in the 70s, really the birth of much of that offensive theory. To, to see him go on and have a chance to be an office coordinator at the University of Tennessee to walk in and, I mean, what a gift. You know, Coach, you're talking about a gift that you have. You know, did walk in and have Stan Morgan as a wide receiver in the program in Tennessee. What a gift. And uh, did you go on to Auburn and see the obvious success in those programs? Did you go on and be a, a, a head coach in his alma mater, Marshall Newman, play for a national championship? Did you go on and become, uh, his, his last stop, the head coach at the University of Richmond, where multiple conference championships, great wins, and uh, ranked number one in the nation many weeks during his time there. You know, my dad enjoyed a great coaching career, but for those who know my dad, know that he's more than just a ball coach. There's a, seeing lives transform, see lives become better men, that was a heartbeat of our dad, so he transitioned to become the president of, of FCA. And for 13 years, he led ministry to the heights that he's never seen before. Saw the growth and the reach become something that made a significant difference. And uh, so when 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 Dad retired, nearly retired from FCA, they, they kind of kept him around in coaches ministry. And then over the last ten years, he's really kind of defined much of uh, probably what he's been to of uh, around the game. You know, uh, in, in coaching, you win and lose a lot of games. It's part of the business brand. All right, but you know what? Uh, the head coach of the Sheeta family. He is undefeated, I know, as a uh, brother. I know he's undefeated as a husband. He's undefeated to three children. They have, he's undefeated to nine grandchildren. So Coach, it's just an honor to be here tonight with you and it's with everybody as we just celebrate your uh, uh, contribution to football in this great state. And uh, so with that, I congratulate you on uh, the Hall of Fame version.
coming up at Baseburg Vehicle. I mean, both they, they were so, those towns were so small, both cities they were signed on the same boat. <laughs> but so many people poured into my life. My mom and dad, and then my grandparents, great. A lot of folks not, don't have that privilege today, to be that close to them. And that is a special good for the grandparents as well as the grandchildren. But you know, to be able to have people that pour in your life and teach you good fundamentals of life and love and family and work ethic and then a great game of football. And my wife of 57 years, Barbara, she is sweet Barbara. And it's a true blessing from God. I have three children that represent the three loves of my life. My daughter Robin. She uh, in, sem in seminary met Ken Lewis, a former player at Clemson, and a pastor at Cross Point Church in Clemson now. That's one of my loves, the church. And then my number one son, Vic, hit the ball coach at Houston Baptist, which starting up a football program down there after winning the national championship at Azusa Pacific University out in California. But all he ever wanted to do was be a football coach. And then son Lance. And a big started his coaching career with us at the University of Richmond. But then Lance came along, and I had an opportunity to go to Cleveland Browns and coach offense there. You know what? Right before I went in our hotel office, God, I had to go to, I said, I got to go to the restroom. I went in there and got before the Lord. We had a come to Jesus meeting in there. <laughs> and he said, You don't need to do this. You're not supposed to do this. This is not who you are. You stay where you are. Well, don't you know this? I go in our hotel office, and you got to play the NFL. You understand the drill. I mean, going there, and here he is. He laid out a contract at three times the salary I was making at that time as a head coach in college, which wasn't a lot like it is today. And then the other thing was, he began to tell me about this and about that and about the other, and got a couple of cars, one for me and my wife, and then I got a couple of different free loans for a house or wherever I wanted to live. And, I mean, it goes on and on and on, and I said, I'm not believing this kind of a deal. And then he said, so here's the contract. And I said, well, Mr. Motel, I, I, I really appreciate this, but I want you to understand one thing. I try to live a life of integrity ever since I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I'm under contract right now at the University of Richmond in Virginia. And I can't sign your contract because I'm under contract. I'd have to go back and get my creditor to release me from my credit contract. Then I would be free to sign your contract. He said, there are only like 16 of these jobs in America. I said, I understand that. But I want you to understand that if I'm going to have integrity, I've got to have it in all situations. He sat back in that chair like, I'm not believing this guy. And then he said, you know, there's probably not enough integrity in the NFL you go do that. And I tell you, folks, so I went back and talked to my president. He said, well, if you're going to go up, you should stop here. I said, Dr. Allen, you're not giving me your blessing and release me from the contract. He said, well, if you want to go, go ahead. I don't see why you want to go up there and do that. Or but, you know, it's your choice if you want to go. No, that's not the deal. I'm here. And the great thing about that was, Lance, he was getting out of high school, had some opportunities to go other places. He chose to stay employed at the University of Richmond, where a great career step was. And so when you when you have your sons coach for you, pay for you, and you have a daughter that goes into the church, what better life can you have than with your woman that God bless you with? A real, real special lady for 57 years now. And good Lord willing, we'll be keeping on keeping on. <laughs> It is really a very special honor to be here, sure enough. But one of the great guys that poured himself into my life was my high school coach, Gus Allen. Coach Allen and his wife Jerry are sitting right down here. And I tell you, out in Batesburg down that way, they had not had a winning season in 11 years. I mean, if they had a winning season, I mean, they had forever. 
And so Coach Alley comes in. He went. He got out of the Navy and played running back at the University of South Carolina. We also were the catcher on the baseball team down there. And then when he graduated, he went into coaching. And about his, I guess, third year out of coach, out of college, he comes to Pittsburgh Week. And he comes to Pittsburgh. I was an eighth grader. But let me tell you what, I was so excited. You see, because I went to the library. And I'm going to be the best player to be on the library. So they had a book on football. The only book they had in the whole library was Championship Football by Coach Dana X. Bob, Hall of Famer, one of the starters and founders of the American Football Coaches Association, a Carson Newman graduate. But I, I, I read that book and devoured it. But then Coach Allen he comes in there, and I was privileged to be able to play for him four years, all three sports, you know. And then I worked for him during the summer. Now, I love my mama dearly. I lived to please my dad. But you know what? My sophomore year in high school, I began to figure things up. My dad worked all the time. And all of a sudden, I realized I was spending about six hours a day more with Coach Gus Allen than I was my own daddy. So he became a daddy figure for me. But I told him I wanted to coach. So he, he, I go in and watch film with him. And he'd tell me what he was looking for in the film and said, see this guy do this? He would tell me, you know, this is how we can attack this guy. I learned, I was fun. He taught me how to do an offensive game plan, how to do a defensive game plan, work on the special team. And he taught great fundamentals. Now I'm not the biggest guy in the world, but you know what made it fun? to go to college and be able to start for four years, go to the Marine Corps and play, and when they take 175 Marines from around the world, cut it down to a 41 man roster and play a 16 game schedule, and 11 of your teammates go into the NFL. And some of those big old guys in these big old schools, little guy can win. If he's got the heart, those guys come out of his bed, go to him and deliver and do what Coach Allen taught me in high school. Fundamentally very important, not only in the game of football, but in life. So I was so thankful that tonight Coach Allen is here because he helped lay the foundation for my football career. And then I went to Carson Newman to go to college. The graduation speaker there, well, first of all, I walked in the gym, and there's a picture, a picture of David X. Bob, a Carson Newman graduate. And you know, he was never had a losing season as a coach. Ended up going to Texas A&M, never had a losing season. Went to Nebraska, the athletic director for football, never had a losing season. Go to Texas, never had a losing season, retired as football coach, and hired Carol, hired Darrell Roll. And my senior year of college, he graduated, he was a speaker. And I had the privilege of visiting with him and letting him know my story related to him. There have been a lot of folks that have put in a lot of things into your life. But nobody puts the bus into the your life as the Lord Jesus Christ coming and living as part of the Holy Spirit in the temple, which is your body and soul and spirit. And so as we um, get ready to close out here tonight, there's a little poem that I've always enjoyed. It says, your, man, your, <clears throat> your name might appear down here, but well, may not appear down here in this world hall of fame. In fact, you may be so unknown that no one knows your name. The headlines here may pass you by, and the neon lights are blue. But if you love and serve the Lord, then I have news for you. The Hall of Fame is only good as long as time shall elapse. But keep in mind, God's Hall of Fame is for eternity. This crowd of earth may soon forget the heroes of the past. They cheer like mad until you fall, and then that's how we you last. But in God's Hall of Fame, by just believing on His Son, inscribe your find your name. I tell you, friend, I'd rather, I wouldn't trade my name, however small, that's written far beyond the stars in that celestial hall. For any famous name on earth or glory that it shares, I'd rather be an unknown here and have my name up there. So as we say tonight, party. With a day that's slipping fast, you know, can you say, can you say tonight, or is the day 
this or the past, that you helped one single person of the many that you have passed. In a state of life rejoicing over something you did or said, there's one whose hopes were fading. Now the courage of the head. Did you waste a day or use it? Was it well or poorly spent? Did you leave a trail of kindness or scar of discontent? And as you close your eyes in slumber, do you think that God can say, hey, you made the world much better for the life you live today. So my prayer for each and every one of us is that we'll walk the walk, we'll sprinkle a little salt, and let our light shine, and we'll be day in and day out in all that we do and all we say, what God wants us to be, and accomplish what He wants us to accomplish. And I'm just thankful that I've had the privilege, and I have the privilege, of being honored to be a part of my home state, South Carolina Football Hall of Fame, and be with you all here.